welcome back again if you're new to my channel welcome if you're someone who's been here before and you've come back welcome to you and thank you for coming back today i want to talk about something a little bit different that i haven't i've touched on but haven't really talked about um basically about cosmetic surgery or plastic surgery whichever you call it I, I don't know what's the difference if i'm on who start i really don't know over the years i'm going to be 47 in march so i'm no spring chicken obviously so i've had a few little bits and bobs done over the years and i just wanted to talk about them i don't really know why if i'm money so I just sometimes like telling people and if people want to listen then brilliant but if you don't want to listen then fair enough and all I'd just like to point out as well is everything I say is just my personal experience. If you're planning on having anything done, um, obviously do a bit of research. Don't go by what I'm telling you at all because, like I said, these are just my opinions, my experience and just what I thought at the time. So everybody's experience, costs and whatever is different. So I thought I've had to actually write it down because I was trying to think of date. I'm terrible with dates and stuff like that. So whatever dates I tell you are probably going to be an average within a couple of years of each other because I am rubbish with dates. So I'll start from the beginning. When I was a teenager, I got a little bit obsessed with the way I look. Not as in I thought I was beautiful. <laughs> Nothing like that. Completely opposite. Just didn't like my face basically my body I weren't that fussed about my body because you could cover your body up but my face I got a little bit I don't know I think you probably call it now like that body dysmorphia or whatever but them days like as I said I'm 40 nearly 47 then them days they didn't have a name and there was no internet and everything so it kind of, I suppose it kind of looked as if I was just just a bit moody teenager <laughs> if I'm honest but I literally got obsessed with my nose my ears my teeth my eyes my skin everything I hated just couldn't stand my face a little bit weird when I think about it now it seems really bizarre because I'm not happy about my face now obviously but I've got to the age where I've just like ah sorry I nearly swore then <laughs> sorry it's my face I'm stuck with it it is a face I've been given, just deal with it. So, I, I'm sorry if this sounds quite arrogant. I don't mean to sound quite arrogant. It's just when you're a teenager, everything is highlighted, isn't it? Sorry, I've got my pen here. Everything, what to some bit people may sound quite tri trivial, when it's you and you're obsessed with your nose and other people are saying there's nothing wrong with it, in your head, it's wrong and there's nothing anyone can say will make you feel any better it's just unfortunately i mean to the point where i didn't like school much anyway and i was rubbish at everything so for the last two years of school i barely went i don't think you get away with it nowadays the, the um true man would have you but he did used to come and get me sometimes and take me back to school but i used to just come home dinner time so that was, I don't, like I said, I don't want this video to be grim and depressive because it, it's, at the time, yeah, I was a bit fed up, but now I've got over it and sometimes I can laugh about it now. So that was a reason why I wasn't at school the last two years-ish, which obviously never did me any favours because some things now I haven't got a bloody clue. But to be fair, I think even if I'd gone to school, I wouldn't have remembered it anyway because I've got a short memory. So... What I can start with first is, because obviously my mum realised something went right, I think once she realised I just wasn't a moody teenager, she did actually phone the doctor who came round and was like, well, what's the matter with you, <laughs> basically, why are you not coming out of your bedroom? So I think I just told her, but I don't like this and I don't like that and this and that. So, and then, to be fair, she was really, well, I, I think she gave me antidepressants at first, which, <laughs> you know, it's not, I wouldn't. I don't know if they'd still do that, but basically she did get the ball rolling to get stuff done. She was like, basically, what is it about your face that you don't like? And I, when I was a kid, I did used to suck my thumb. And of course, it gave me goofy teeth. 
so my teeth stuck out and now I don't know if I'm it was my nan who told me it's also probably one of my brothers but somebody or I just seen it on the telly it told me that when you go to sleep earwigs go in your ears and eat your brains <laughs> so when I used to suck my thumb what I used to do when I used to go to sleep is I shut my thumb like that hold my ear down like that and bend this ear down because I was worried something was going to get in my ear so of course my one ear you can see now it has been done but I'll talk about that in a minute so basically apart from my skin as well those were the two main things that were like bugging me the most and the, what was bugging me the most about them is I'd done it myself oh you know my teeth stuck out because of my own fault so that was like really winding me up as well so then basically mum took me to the dentist and she arranged um the doctor I mean she she arranged for me to go to a hospital and have my ear done so right so all that in motion at the time so what i'll do is i'll go through each step of everything that i've had done over the years like i say these are just my opinions i don't want this to be a grim depressive video because it's not and yeah like i say um this is just me what happened to me and how i felt at the time so please bear with me i may say things that might be politically incorrect so i do apologize in advance so right i'm gonna go through step one so the first thing that I had done was basically my ear pin back it has got a proper name which I'll put at the beginning of this I don't think it's just called having your ear pin back I'm sure it's got a proper name so that I think I had that in Worcester hospital there was a waiting list that was done on the NHS because of my age and a bit but to be honest I think if you if something's bothering you enough you can be put on the waiting list I'm not 100% sure but as you can see from my ears, I don't know if you can notice, see, the, see that ear there, it's bendy, but this ear there, I can't bend it. It's basically, I think they said they took a bit of cartilage at the back. See, I can't bend that. So uh, I went in, had that done, stayed in overnight, and then I had to have a bandage on my head <laughs> for a week afterwards until that was done. But over the moon with that i mean like so you can see you can definitely see close up you can see the dip see i can't even bend that that my normal one that's me the thing what amuses me most about this ear is when i go to the opticians and they try my glasses on it's really funny because that ear's a bit stuck whenever i put glasses on they're always like lopsided and you can see their faces are a little bit they're adjusting them and then they're putting them back on again and then they're just you could see they're like in a couple of times i say that is pin back <laughs> because you can see basically the bit of a confusion on their faces about me here so like you say you can't see it so that was uh, i think i was 17 when i had that done I'm sure that was worcester hospital so yeah so i had that done i didn't feel no pain or anything sorry so, trying to sort my hair out now didn't feel no pain or anything with that just the only thing was the tightness of the bandage so i think i'm sure that was a week i had that on so that was great and then why that was done then yeah though then i had the appointment to start to have my brace done so i'm often wondering now if it was my thumb sucking obviously made me goofy but when i had the brace on i did they did have to remove quite a few teeth so uh, at the time I had a few teeth removed and then I had one of them braces in with a little hook on to move the teeth over and then I had another break, pull in pull out brace and then this took about two years to get done and then I had my fixed brace. Now I've got to tell you a story about my son and his dentist, the rudest woman you'd ever met. He's, he's, he did used to suck his thumb a little bit when he was younger he was not he wasn't goofy actually at all but he did look like he needed a brace so he's actually got a brace on at the moment although his teeth weren't half as bad as mine so i took him to this dentist or orthopedic is it you call it who's who was referred to by his dentist so i've never met the woman before older lady so we took him there the first time me and liam went there and now uh, that's my husband and she was measuring go oh yes he is eligible for a brace and everything so then the next time i took him on my own 
and I was sitting on the chair waiting and she was talking about his jawline and everything. And she basically said that his jawline is not developed enough. His front teeth are higher, more prominent than his back teeth. And she was basically saying, which we knew anyway, that his jawline hadn't um, processed. can't remember the word she Like your mum's. Another time, I was just like, you know, when you're in a bit of a world on your own. And then she said it again. She says, your mum's jawline isn't correct. You can see the way her front teeth aren't in line with her bottom teeth. Which I'm not being funny, but I had a brain. I know my teeth aren't perfect at all. Bear in mind, it's what? what 20 odd years ago since i had a brace and i know times moved on and things are different and technology but i just thought how rude she didn't know me from adam this is like the second time she met me and i think that is uh, maybe again this is my paranoia and um, where i am a little bit oversensitive sometimes if i'm not in the right mood i find some things a little bit like not that's out of order but she basically was saying that my jawline was wrong. And I thought, you cheeky cow, I had a brace on for two years to get these teeth like that. How rude. I never said anything because at the end of the day, she's doing my son's teeth and he's had the brace a few months now and his teeth are looking lovely. You can see even with the brace on. But I just thought, so I think some people need to be a little bit more sensitive to other people's feelings. She didn't know me. She didn't know my history. She didn't know... Which she didn't know nothing about me. I just kind of think when some people insult somebody else, whether it's intentional or not intentional, or just a passing comment, I, I don't know, I think maybe some people should have a little bit more thought for other people's feelings. At the time, I did laugh when I got out and we had a good laugh about it. Like, you know, me and son, my son, Sully. And I'm okay with it as such. But sometimes it brings you a little bit of insecurity to, it brings it back to the surface again. When you think you've got over something and somebody says something that you're not expecting and it's something you've been a little bit obsessed with anyway. You know, like I said, I, I'm, well, obviously I am bothered about it because I'm talking about it. I just think when you're going to insult someone, just think about it first. Think about that person's feelings. They may laugh and joke about it, but are they really laughing? I wouldn't have said something to her. I mean, no offence, but she was no all painting herself. She wasn't. But who am I to insult someone? But she obviously thought it was okay. But to be honest, we have been to that dentist a few times and uh, customer service leaves a lot to be desired. And I have looked at the feedback of the dentist and they've had so many negative feedbacks to bear about it. It's been rude to all the people who come there, children, parents. So, yeah, that's obviously her nature to be nasty to people. Well, I would consider that nasty to insult a complete stranger. But that's the way people are, isn't it? Unfortunately, there's some horrible people around and you just got to ignore them, isn't there? I just kind of think, well, if that's the kind of person you are, then you can't be a very happy person if you think it's okay. Just pe not necessarily her, if I'm honest. I'm just talking about people in general. When I've heard some nasty things being said to other people over the years, I just kind of think it, like, says a lot about the person themselves. Same with when I've watched a YouTube video. And I've seen somebody leave a nasty comment underneath. And I'm like, why did you do that? Why? I know everybody's entitled to their opinion. But I kind of go on the basis if you haven't got anything nice to say. Don't say anything at all. But again, that's, that's just me. So the next, after that, I'm going to move on a few years to basically my boob job. So bear with me a moment. I'm just going to look at me notes. The so next, boobs. Um, about was it about eleven years ago ish when we lived at our old house. Um, I don't know if my mum had passed away about a year before. I don't know if it is in my mind. I just kind of thought life's too short. If you're gonna do something, do it now. Sort of thing. So my hair is proper annoying me today. I just woke up one day, and just thought I don't want to be flat chested anymore. Don't know why. My mum had boobs. My sister's got boobs. I'm not kidding you. I was literally flat twisted. Like there was nothing there. So I don't know. 
I obviously got the bloody short stick there or short straw whatever you call it so yeah so I woke up one day and just thought I don't want to be flat chested anymore so I phoned my sister up and her, her friend's sister had had a boob job and it was a lady surgeon who did it so I basically got her phone number I couldn't afford it I don't even know where my head was at the time I don't even know what had changed but I just decided I just want boobs didn't want to go big I just wanted to look normal so I went to see the surgeon um you have to pack I think I had to pay about 200 pounds or something just to see her but they said obviously if you go ahead with the operation they'll deduct that I thought that's nice <laughs> oh, you know thanks so went to see her lovely woman she was like what what size do you want to go and I says I just want to go in proportion with my body so she gave me some implants to try and put down my bra to see what they look like and the ones were massive and even she laughed they just looked ridiculous <laughs> like you know so I just said no just I just don't want to go massive I just want to go normal so yeah so we eventually agreed on the size so, uh, so, so didn't know how I was going to pay for it but thankfully I used a credit card so I put it on a credit card and it, at the time it was £3,800 I put on my credit card which I wouldn't recommend anyone to do but at the time I don't know what had changed in my head Liam to be fair was basically it's your body if you want to do it it's up to you he didn't encourage me and he didn't discourage me at all he was just like it's up to you it's your body if you think we can afford it at the time we couldn't have really afford it I had to work in a nightclub for about two years afterwards on the weekends to pay for it but it was I'm still there now and they're touch wood they're okay so yeah so I went in had the surgery it didn't really hurt I thought it'd hurt but so I think I don't know if I was drugged up or what but on the night I had it in the morning and on the evening my sister come to see me and she, this is where sometimes I wonder where my head was in fact I actually asked her if I did this the other day because I didn't know if I actually did it or I dreamed it but when she come in to see me I lifted my top up and showed her my boobs I was like look at me boobs <laughs> don't know why I did I'd never dream of doing that in it was just really bizarre and even she says I was like oh Jesus I had, I, said, I asked her a few weeks ago I said you know when I had my boob job did I show you my boobs and she went yes you did <laughs> so yeah so and then I had them done no problem the only thing I couldn't do is I couldn't lift my arms for about a week afterwards because she I think she said she put them on top of my muscles now and then a few years after that I had no problems with them at all. Do you remember the, is it PIP? I get, I get confused with PPI and PIP. The PIP saga all blown up, didn't it? Fortunately, the lady who done my implants was the lady who pointed it out to the medical profession people that there was something wrong with the implants she was using. This was before I had mine and they'd stopped using them. And when she obviously she what do you call him the whistleblower I think she was like the whistleblower who noticed it so I was super lucky with that but I did actually look on the hospital's website just to see what if they were the PIP ones what it was and they said if by some accident not accident if we had put them in we would replace them free of charge so I thought, well, that's good to know. But like I said, touch wood, I've had no problems with them. And I, I'm almost sure she'd already pointed them out before she put mine in from the dates. And I did actually see her on the telly talking about it. So the dates caught of like when she mentioned it to the medical profession people. So, and I, I like I said, I'm really like, I don't want to jinx myself. I'm a little bit worried about jinxing myself, talking about something. Then it all goes I nearly said tits up then. <laughs> then it gets pear shaped. So again, I hadn't really thought about my boobs as a teenager. My boobs wasn't something I because I always thought I could cover my body. I just got woke up one day and thought I want boobs. Don't know what changed. Don't know. So again, if you're gonna have a boob job or you're thinking about a boob job, do more research from me because my research involved going on the internet and looking at before and after pictures because I'm not one of these people who want to know details I know that's 
probably wrong. I know some people want to know every detail down to the last step. One, two, three, four, what happened? I don't. All I know is I wanted boobs. That was it. Do what you got to do. Don't give me any details because I don't want to know. Do what you got to do. I'll pay the money. You do it. I'm off. So <laughs> that was it. So yeah, so that was my, that was, I mean, he said that's my story. It's not a story, is it? That's my reason. But if you're thinking of having it done, please do your research first. And I, I'm guessing they're going to be a lot more than the 3800 that I paid now. Because what's, I'm trying to look at my notes. That's about, it's got to be over, it's got to be 11 or 12 years ago. It's got to be because we've been here over t 10 years now. And it was in our old house. So yeah, so that's my boob. So next thing is the eyes. So bear with me. Next. I had my eyes, laser eye surgery on my eyes because I just got fed up of wearing contact lenses and fed up with glasses where they leave the groove on my nose. I think it's about nine years ago-ish. So I went in to see them at first and basically they were like the more, they were proper doing the salesman technique. If you sign up now, you can do it for this. I think the first time I went there, they said it would be about 2,800. So I went, no, you're all right, I'm paying that. Because I thought, that just seemed really expensive. So I left it, and about a week or so later, the man, the manager, put <laughs> me up and basically says, she kept knocking the price down and said, you can do it for, I think it's 1,200. I think it's just over 1,200. So I thought, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'll go with that. So when he, it was a weird place. The place was really old-fashioned, like 70s type room. Now, the receptionist, gave me a form to fill in, which was basically all questions like, what expectations do you expect of your eyes? How long do you expect it to last? Do you think you'll be in any pain? And it was like, yes, no, maybe, all these type answers. So I was just basically, excuse me, I was just ticking anything because I thought, I don't know, I haven't done any research because I, I don't do research into anything. If I want something done, I don't want to know how they're going to do it. Really don't want to know. <laughs> I know some people, like, again, it's not everybody's way of doing things, but it's mine. So, and then as I was filling it in, she came back and went, oh, I should have given you this form, which was basically a form with all the answers on. Basically, I should have read it and then gone to answer the questions. But by then I'd filled it all in and signed it. So then I had to go and see the other girl who went through it with me and basically I'd filled everything in wrong. So she went through it correcting everything because for some reason they weren't going to let me have my eyes done unless these questions had been answered. Well, if she'd give me the right form in the first place, I probably would have stood a chance. But anyway, that, that they don't care, do they? They just want your money. So they, they said there was two choices. You could either have it lasered where they take a lip off or something lasered and then laser cutted sorry and then do your bit on your eye or you could have it blade cutted the blade cutted was a lot cheaper sorry if i'm saying these wrong these are just what i'm trying to remember in my head and i says well what have you been doing all these years and he said blade cutting laser cutting was newer and more expensive so i said does anybody have any problems with the blade cutting he said no i says well i'll have the blade cutting then if it's like lot cheaper so that was it and i tell you what it was the most terrifying experience of my life absolutely terrifying again i think this was a case where i should have researched what was going to happen because i was petrified i've never been so scared in my whole life first of all they just walk you in the room if you gown, you put a gown over your clothes and you walk in and everybody's got gowns on and masks on and everything and none of them said hello to you at all you just walked in with all these people in a room gets in the chair like a dentist type chair and the chap comes to you he was friendly and basically pries your eye open I, i'm still scarred by it if i'm honest it was petrifying and um, all you can see is lights and everything you can't feel no pain at all but because all you can see is lighting, I remember, and then at one point you could actually smell burning. Whether I imagined that, I don't know. But I mean, I was actually rigid to the chair. I was terrified. I thought, is this bloke going to be the last person I ever see in my life? Uh, yeah, it was bloody scary. <laughs> I still think, when I think about it now, I'm bleeding now. 
I mean, Liam had it done about a year later and I warned him, it's really scary. It didn't hurt one bit. There was no pain, done both eyes. Um, I think they put a contact lens over to protect it while you went home and then had to sleep with patches on my eyes and went back the next day for him to check and everything. There was no pain whatsoever, which is weird because you think it would be painful, but it was scary. I'm sorry if it's gone dark. It's only about half three and it's bloody dark, but yeah. So the reason I had that done is because I just got fed up with it. I couldn't, the thing was, I didn't realise how bad my eyes were getting. But so I had that done. That was before I was 40. And they said, after you turn 40, you are going to start needing reading glasses again because your naturally eyes will deteriorate. Bloody right. It was like it when I was 40. Like, I can't even click. <laughs> it was like, so as I turned 40, I couldn't read again. So I do have glasses for reading, but I'm all right for driving now. I can see long distance is brilliant. Before, I never used to be able to see number plates or anything and signs on the roads. I couldn't see them. But yeah, so if you do have your eyes laser, laser, laser cutted, um, you know what I mean, the laser, laser eye treatment, if you do have that done, do a bit of research. But uh, so I was so scared. I was absolutely petrified. But they didn't, like, again, to my own fault, I should have done a bit of research and be prepared for that because the burning scared me the most. I didn't know your eyes burnt or smelt like the burning. But I'm glad I had it done. Although, like I said, I do need glasses for reading again. I don't need them for driving, so that's good. So that was that. So my next thing is the Botox, so bear with. So the last thing that I've had done, which I knew, do need doing it again, is Botox. The first time I had Botox was, um, if you've watched my videos before, um, I talk about when we opened a clothes shop. Big disaster. <laughs> Don't do it. But what happened with the clothes shop was um, the guy who took over our lease on the shop, he had a shop a couple of doors down, a tattoo shop, which also did Botox upstairs. Now, basically, the guy who'd done the Botox, when we were putting the sign up in our shop, came over and was basically telling me and Liam that we needed Botox. You could do even more Liam than me. <laughs> he was going to tell him Liam he needed it here and here. And then he says to me, oh, do you want a bit of Botox? I'll do it free because you could be like an advertisement for me. And I was like, my crow's feet weren't as bad as they are now because it was a while ago. But I was like, no, you're all right. I thought cheeky bugger. Oh, just coming up to me and telling me I need Botox. So, you know, bugger off. So anyway, I left it for a while and then, eventually he kept asking and asking and then he come round and got me one day and says oh just come on just have a little go I'll do it free you can be like um like I said an advertisement so I thought all right then I weren't that fuss but he kept going on about the lines on my head now and then you can see him but they're not they're more prominent now obviously because I'm older but at the time there was hardly any lines there but he seemed to be a bit obsessed with my lines so he did the Botox and to be honest, I couldn't tell any different and nobody else could. So I just left it at that. I remember thinking, really, I don't know how much you charge, but I wouldn't pay you. I can't tell any difference. Well, that was my first experience with Botox. And you know when you're not quite sure about somebody and you're always kind of thinking, hey, a bit dodgy, is this kosher? Well, about... Year about, I'll say about two years ago, there was a documentary on the telly about dodgy people doing Botox who are not really qualified to do it. Well, he was one of them, wasn't he? <laughs> so, yeah, so I seen him on the programme where he was doing these Botox parties and everything. And I don't know if he wasn't actually qualified to do it. He did say he was a midwife at some... I'm sure he said he was a midwife. Some doctor you know medical profession thing but something about him didn't quite add up anyway so yeah so when I seen him on the telly you know where they do these follow-up programs where they catch him so he was in a cafe in a shopping centre and they went up to him with the cameras going uh, we've caught you doing Botox parties and we know you're not qualified and all that so I was like oh bloody hell <laughs> I thought well it was a couple of years ago and I haven't had no effects so not that I know of so, yeah, basically, don't have Botox from somebody called Johnny Botox. It's probably not a good idea. <laughs> that was his name, Johnny Botox, and he did Botox parties. So, or if you do, 
check them out first, Google them, research them. Don't just be like me and go, oh, it's free, I'll have that. So that was quite a while ago. I'm looking at my dates. That was when we had the shop. I can't even remember the dates of that. But if you look back on my videos, you'll see the dates. And I'm sorry, Chid. So a couple of years ago, again, I started to look in the mirror. And you can see my crow's feet through there. I'm looking at my crow's feet and I'm like, oh, God, getting old now. So I had Botox. Liam says, for your birthday, if you want Botox, I'll give you money for your Botox. So I had that done from a lady around the corner. I did research her and she was genuine and nothing seemed dodgy about her at all. And I went round to see her and had the Botox done. And I don't know if you can see a scar on my eye now. I actually felt burst, like something burst there. Felt it and heard it. And I've actually got a little scar there now. And I went about, was it about a week or so later where you go for your top up? And I couldn't really see any difference. But you're supposed to keep it topped up, aren't you? Which I didn't. I think I'm just too impatient. I want instant results. So I, I had it done with her. I couldn't really see anything. I'm like, I saw it's a waste of money. I ain't having done that done again. So I am going to have it done again in my birthday next month. Liam's paid for that again because I can see my lines now without my glasses. So I know it's getting bad. <laughs> you know, again, like I said, I'm, I'm 47. So you've got to expect some wrinkles and whatever. Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm going to go to the same lady again. And the weird thing is, I see her everywhere now. She only lives around the corner. I've never seen this woman before, ever, in all the years I've been here. And now I see her everywhere. I see her walking past the house. When I've been in shopping in Debenhams, I've seen her. Marks and Spencers, I've seen her as well when I went to the cafe. She's 60 years old. And she's completely flawless. So obviously the stuff she uses is decent quality stuff. It's no cheap rubbish. So... I may go back to her again. I'm not 100% sure because uh, I've looked around and she was quite expensive to another person who I've seen who actually has got a shop and everything. So I'm not quite sure whether to go back to her or shop around. I don't know because it, it's a lot of money to part with. Look how dark it is. It's really dark in it. So my next... Thing that I want done desperately again is I want some more Botox and I think I need some there to lift that up a little bit. I think I'd look, oh my god, doesn't that look weird? I think I can add that done like a spark. Yeah. Because apparently they say if you have two lots done, you don't have to pay like double, do you? So if you have two bits done, I think that could be doing me go, I think I'd look all right. Oh my god, it looks a bit scary. <laughs> so yeah, so my next job is Botox. Again, maybe I'm being a bit too vain. I should grow old gracefully. But why should you grow old gracefully? They wouldn't have invented Botox if you're supposed to <laughs> grow old gracefully. And then you think about it. Women dye the hair, don't they? It's the way I see it. It's the same thing as that, really. Just a bit more expensive. I don't know why it's so expensive. Because they must be able to get it cheap now. I don't know why they charge the price that they do. But supply and demand, in it? So there you go. So that's everything I've told you about what I've had done. So yeah, let me know any experience if you've had similar experiences to me. Like I says, um, don't have anything you've done based on what I've said. If you're going to have something done, Google it, research it, research it all the way. Or unless you're like me, don't be surprised when you're a bit scared. When something like this with my eyes, oh, that was terrifying. But I think if I'd researched it, I still would have had it done anyway. So, yeah. So, thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening, everybody, if you've managed to stay to the end. So, I'll speak to you all soon. Thank you. Bye.